Father, this in the Holy Spirit, O God, Amen. May the Lord bless the Lord, His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of all ages and name. Amen. Today is the Sunday before the Holy and the Great Fast, the Great Lent. May its blessings be with us uh, this year as every year. <clears throat> and uh, as you probably are already familiar with, the Church has selected the portion of the Sermon on the Mount um, as a preparation for the Great Lent and will continue, uh, God willing, um, next Sunday. So we just read from the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6 today, the first part of the chapter. Um, and in it, the Lord uh, exemplifies the, the four pillars, um, or some summarize it to three, some narrow it down to two, um, of, of what we should be focusing on um, during this time. Anyone know any of the four that we just read? Tells us on a practical level how to do Four things. Some of them are very easy to recognize, right? Fasting and prayer, right? Um, because he start he he actually starts with a different one. He starts in the gospel here about giving. He says, "When you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing." Let your charitable deed be in secret, and your father who sees in secret himself will reward you openly. And this phrase, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly, is repeated um, in, in this passage. <clears throat> so he starts with giving, then he talks about prayer, and he gives the model prayer, which is the Lord's Prayer, our Father, right? And you'll know, notice during these 55 days, or at least for the um, until Basra, we're focusing on this prayer even in the hymnology um, quite often. <clears throat> um, and then he, at the end of the prayer, he, he focuses on one of the last phrases of the prayer, which is forgiveness, right? Forgive us our trespasses, we forgive those who trespass against us, or in this translation, uh, debts. And then he talks about, again, um, the importance <clears throat> of when we forgive others, then we have more potential um, for God to forgive us. Um, and then finally, he ends in at least this passage here with, with fasting, because as you know, we're starting the fast, God willing, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> also, as you may already know, we celebrated the 53rd commemoration of um, St. Pope Krillus VI of Blessed Memory. Um, and since these two events fall on the same weekend this year, thought it would be a good idea to hear from His Holiness, um, the Blessed Saint, about these three virtues, whether by word or by deed. And so we'll just select a few um, passages from um, uh, some of the letters that he had written about these topics, and then we just take himself as the prime, one of the prime examples of how to put this in practice from even contemporary time. <clears throat> um, so... I thought it would be appropriate also just to start with a story on what happened on this day, not when he was patriarch, not when he was um, uh, a monk even, or a priest, but as a little child. As a little child on this day, the, the day before the, the great fast, as you know, we're in the custom of celebrating because we will not see the luxurious food, hopefully, for, for quite a bit of time. <clears throat> and so his family... Um, prepared a lavish meal. Even though they were not very rich, they were probably middle class, or possibly even upper middle class. Um, but um, on when the family prepared the feast to celebrate, the young boy protested, saying, um, this is not right, that we should eat this. What about our neighbor? His, his neighbors, or their neighbors were poor, and they didn't have much to eat, probably just bread. So he said, this is not right for us to celebrate like this. And what about the poor family next to us? So he insisted that they take the food <laughs> that they were going to celebrate the feast with and go, um, again, mind you, this is a little child thinking about this, not about himself or about sometimes we'd be disappointed that we're starting to fast. But he wanted to, in a sense, to fast early by, by give the example of giving and thinking of others. And so I thought this is a bit that's rebuked not only his family, who were much older than him, um, but rebukes us 
especially on these days when we're just thinking about well, what am I going to eat uh, today. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of prayer, though, so that was kind of like the one example of giving. In terms of prayer, um, we can't necessarily say any words um, better than just say, look at his life. Look at the amount of, of, of prayers that he had prayed, probably more than all of us in this room um, so far in, in our lives. How do we know this? Well, if you, you heard of what he used to do on a daily basis, waking up at 2 or 3 a.m., starting with you know, the prayers of, of the midnight prayers and the Agdeya and the Tazbaha, and um, he would make the, the Hamal himself. Um, the, of course, this was before he became patriarch, and maybe even at times then he still did anyways. Um, and then he would celebrate the divine liturgy. And even as patriarch, he went into meetings after that. Probably his first meal was not until 2 or 3 p.m. So we'd say 12 hours. And even in his meetings, they said he was in the spirit of prayer, um, <clears throat> which is very hard uh, to do, as you might notice. So he was in a state of constant prayer, especially if we can consider the prayer is not just recitation of words before the Lord, but it's connection with God. Um, and he would always felt that he was, and recognized that he was in God's presence, um, and he connected in mind and heart to, to the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, beautiful are the words of the man of prayer, who speaks of prayer. I'll just um, reflect on some of his quotes on prayer. For example, one of them, he says, he doesn't characterize days in our life between good and bad. He said, there's no good days, there's no bad days. There's days of prayer, and they, there's days of not prayer. Um, and he says, the, the days without prayer are empty and void, because they haven't been fi they, they're filled with our desires and lusts. So instead, and sometimes say, I had a good day today. Well, then ask yourself, did, did you pray? Did you connect to God? That's a good day. <laughs> um, and oftentimes, we, um, we, we look at our life, um, as um, a compilation of good and bad things that happened to us. But for him, it was the connection with God. The connection with that's that's the purpose, or that's uh, the, the focus that we should have on how our day is going. Um, another time he said, prayer can do all things, for it moves the hand that manages the whole universe. Um, and another time he said, <clears throat> when someone came to him with, with an issue, he said, he who began the road with you will not leave you stranded in the middle of the road. Um, so his eyes were constantly on God. So prayer brings us close to God. And so it helps develop our faith and recognize that we're in the hands of God. Um, and uh, again, another time he wrote, prayer is the storage of grace. So when we pray, we receive grace. We receive and, and we uh, recognize the grace that we have already received. Um, and he says it's the backbone of blessings, and it and it controls anger and conquers um, the 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 so, the soul or the the negative spirit. <clears throat> um, so you you know his life and his example, and I think the more we contemplate on this, the more it encourages us to grow in prayer, um, uh, in quality and quantity as well. Um, uh, I just reflect on another story with one of the, the priests. Um, this was after he, he became a, a patriarch. Um, so one time there was one of the priests, I believe it was one of Tedros Gorgi. He had uh, a big problem with the government and he, uh, he went that day to, to try to solve the problem. <clears throat> Even the person responsible didn't show up and it was nearby the patriarchate. So he went to get the, the blessing of his holiness. And um, the first thing the Pope asked, did you pray liturgy today? He said, no, 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 I had a, I had a big problem. Um, and then uh, the saint said, my son, when you have something important to do, we pray the liturgy first, right? And it says, tomorrow you pray the liturgy first um, and and put you know the, the problem and the documents on the altar, and then you'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so he did, he obeyed, he, he prayed the divine liturgy, um, and then he went to the, to the office, um, and on the way up the stairs, 
he ran into a dear friend of his, um, and um, they were so um, happy to see each other. They said, no, you have to come and sit in my office and drink some coffee. And as they were talking, um, uh, he said, I have this problem, and so on and so forth. Um, and the person, that person ended up being the boss of the one he needed to see. <laughs> um, and so he was so, of course, his problem was solved. He went back to the patriarch to tell him, he's like, see what happens when you pray the liturgy first? Um, your problem was solved over coffee. Like he already knew. <laughs> um, hopefully that's not the message. <laughs> the message is that we, um, our problem is solved when we bring them to the Lord. Um, physically and, 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 and mentally and, and spiritually. Do we truly leave our problems at the feet of the Lord? Um, and when we attend the liturgy, we feel that we are in the hands of, of God and we put all things in his hands and see how he works. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, Pope Grillo said this out of years and years of experience, personal experience, of seeing how um, God worked in, in this life. And so, it's not, so when we look at the prayers that the church has organized for us in, in this light, they don't become a, a bunch of obstacles. They become opportunities um, for us to connect with God and see God working um, and witnessing his miracles in our life. Um, another time um, when he was writing to a newly ordained uh, priest, he said, um, it's during the liturgy that the doors of heaven are open for us. Um, it's the time that Christ is present among us, offering his body and blood in, in his holy communion so that we may be granted the forgiveness of sins. So do we truly feel that way? Uh, and myself, first and foremost, like sometimes we forget the doors of heaven are open for us and God is willing to shower us with his blessing and his grace, especially the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Um, and on that note, so well, what about the life of forgiveness? If you look at any of the details of his holiness's life, um, whether before ordination, before monasticism or after, um, there was a lot of difficulty. And throughout all that difficulty, he was a, a man of uh, persistence in the holy life and ignoring or putting aside the worldly issues to focus on God. And lo and behold, his issues would be directed according to God's uh, divine will. And even when it came to forgiving those, there were many people who stood against him um, as, as a monk, as a hermit, even the other monks, um, even the abbot at one point in time when he came to defend uh, the seven monks. Um, uh, even at one time, there was a group uh, led by some of the priests who were speaking out against him. Um, and writing ag against him. Um, and one time, uh, so eventually what happened was they were publicizing documents against the patriarch to attack him. Um, and then the machine broke. Um, and then uh, uh, some people actually lost their jobs. And so the priest went to, to, to the patriarch and the patriarch was full of love and mercy and compassion. He says, I know what you're doing, <laughs> basically. Um, he says, I feel bad for the people who lost their jobs. So he was he, he, he never took anything personally. Even at one point in the beginning of his um, patriarchate, when he ca came to sit with, with the bishops, they were, I don't want to say a lot of negative things, but they were coming to, to judge the actions of one of the bishops, who, who actually also ended up attacking him. Um, and then His Holiness was very sad at the situation, and he said, um, uh, he said something to the effect of, anything that he has done against me personally, I forgive him. Don't worry about that. Um, I, I don't want to, to, to make this personal. Um, I forgive him from the bottom of my heart. You know, I, I don't um, have anything against um, this this man. Um, <clears throat> and so he never, in a sense, took things on a, on a personal level. And it was very easy for him to forgive and to overlook. And, and to um, even one time, there was one, he, he made an announcement to bring all the monks back um, who were serving abroad. 
And one of the monks obeyed, but he was upset. And um, he said, okay, on my way back, I'm going to pray in this church. Um, and lo and behold, His Holiness was praying in the same church. And so uh, St. Pope Perlos gave him a few harsh words. And, and the monk left and went back to his monastery. Um, but then the Pope felt bad about what he had said, even though he was in the right. And he went to the monastery looking for, for the monk, and the monk refused to, to, to accept to, to um, see him. Um, and they, they called him several times. He didn't want to come. And so um, eventually he left the cell, and who, when he opened, who did he find? <laughs> his, his holiness. And he, he apologized, and he said, absolve me, forgive me. Like, even though he's the patriarch, it, like, he didn't take that as an opportunity to think of himself higher than he sh should have. Um, and he's very willing to forgive and to reconcile, um, regardless of his rank and his position and, and, and his work. Um, <clears throat> so the last uh, uh, group of, um, uh, like, a collection of, uh, a recollection of, of thoughts or messages from His Holiness about fasting um, will actually conclude with this. Um, shortly before, uh, because, you know, he departed during the Great Lent, so shortly before he departed, he wrote a letter to the the believers in the lands of immigration on fasting. And I thought it was appropriate to read uh, it now as we are beginning uh, the fast. <clears throat> um, so I'll just read sections. So he says, I write you in these holy days wherein our Lord has fasted 40 days and 40 nights on our behalf, wishing you on the occasion of this fast, the fullness of the blessing and the fullness of grace. So we should look at these times as the fullness of blessing, the fullness of not just the feast, but actually the fast, because this is where, like he said, is the storehouse of the grace and blessing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, actually, um, just as a side note, in terms of his fasting, we knew how austere his asceticism was. But I was surprised to learn recently that even on the feast days or the non-fasting days, he would rarely eat. Um, he still would uh, eat until about three o'clock and even simple like dry bread salt cumin like and this is the when he was patriarch um <clears throat> one one of the cooks was joking with some someone who said how come he's not eating the meat he said well you have to grind it really hard and and mix it so he's not able to to see it or to to separate it from the rest of the food um <clears throat> so anyways I, i'm sure that at least for me that's not uh that's not necessary. Um, so he says, um, regarding fasting, when it comes to, he says, fasting must be accompanied with repentance, compunction, and confession of sins. He says, when the Ninevites fasted, they put on sackcloth, and they turned everyone from his evil ways and from the violence that was in their hands, and they cried mightily to God, and God saw their repentance and showed mercy to them. This this is very, like, say, well, what's new here? We have the fraction, and we have uh, the scripture, and we have the doxology. So if you notice, his words are, are not coming from himself, but from living in the church and memorizing. Even at a very young age, he memorized the gospel according to St. John. Um, and uh, this was a great task. And even those, the monks who receive the holy schema, this is one of the things that they're responsible to do every single day. Um, so he had already memorized it as a child. Um, and then he says, uh, regarding fasting, he's, he, 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 uh, he says, uh, the example of Joel that he gives, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with warning, consecrate a fast and a sacred assembly. And then he gives the example of Daniel, the prophet, who said, then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting. And I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made my confession. Then he gives the example of Nehemiah and Ezra and David who fasted, um, and he says, so make your fast, my children, pure and holy, that it may be acceptable before God. So he's saying fasting is not an obligation, but it's a gift that we give to God, and hopefully he accepts it from us. He says, like the fast of the saints, preserve your purity in the land of your sojourn. And then he goes on to, to remember all the people in scripture who were dwelling in the land of their sojourn. So he considers us, for example, we're not in the land, uh, we're in the land of our sojourn. And 
not because we're far from Egypt, but actually because we're not in the kingdom right now. Um, that's that's the land of our home, right? So we're all sojourners and pilgrims, <clears throat> as the scripture says. He says, uh, live the life of repentance that is pleasing to God. Let this season be a season for confession of sins, repentance, and partaking of the holy mysteries, that you may abide in the Lord and he abide in you. Um, even as the living branches that bear fruit abide in the true vine. And may the God of all mercies preserve, confirm, and strengthen you. Um, <clears throat> so I think this was a, a good place to kind of recognize uh, the importance of what the fast is supposed to be for us. It's an opportunity. Um, it's not an obligation. It's it's opportunity to grow close to God, to remove ourselves from the filth and the weight of sin, and to draw near to God, um, and and He will draw near to us. And glory be to Him now and from the age of ages. Oh.